Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those new here, hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a third year family medicine resident and a mom of two. This here is London. Say hi. I think he's kind of tired. Uh, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about work-life balance. I get so many messages from you guys saying that, how do I do it? <laughs> how do I handle being a mom, being a wife, and still going to residency and being a doctor, working 80 hours a week, and how you guys feel so inspired? Well, today I wanted to make a video specifically on that and the things that I do to try to keep my life like a little bit normal so if you guys are interested on hearing my tips on how to balance work and your home life then keep on watching so let me just start off by saying that as a resident you work many many hours it doesn't matter which subspecialty you're in whether it be family medicine internal medicine radiology dermatology surgery OBGYN, all subspecialties every specialty residency is hard residency is training and so on average residents work 80 hours a week on inpatient months um, maybe a little bit less on outpatient months some sub subspecialties work more inpatient than others some do more surgeries obviously than others and so that being said while in residency it is really hard to have good real good balance of both work and your home life um, that being said as a full-fledged attending you can make choices on how your life and your schedule looks no matter the subspecialty and so that is why i personally have chosen to work part-time once i finish residency I will make a separate video on this going into further detail about the job hunting process, my resume, um, interviews, the, the job differences and the pay difference and everything like that. So that will be in an upcoming video. So today I want to tell you specific things that I try to do now to try to balance the two. The balance is not good, but these are the things that I try to do um, in order to make my cup a little bit more full. Tip number one is to be fully present and dedicate your whole self to the activity or the task at hand. So example, while I'm at work, I'm doing everything work related and that includes studying. So I'm seeing patients or I'm learning from the specialist, I'm taking notes, um, I'm trying to write notes as fast as I can and doing everything I can in like spare time. So example, if you have a five minute free window of spare time, I can try doing test questions. If I had 10 minutes, I'll be reading journal articles. If I have like an hour, I can be doing my PowerPoint presentations or I can be doing more test questions. All those things really add up throughout the day. And so I will open up like 50 test questions on my phone and I will do like one or two throughout the day. It doesn't matter that you don't have designated time to just sit down and do test questions. It's okay. Do a few here and there. At the end of the day, at the end of the week, those things will add up. Same with those little tasks that you're th doing throughout the day. All the time that I'm doing those things, I don't have to do them at home. Um, so same thing when I get home, I try to dedicate my full self and not bring any work home and just be with my kids and be with my family. So a lot of you guys ask me like, how do you study at home? I don't. <laughs> I'm really bad at studying at home. And if you guys have younger kids at home, my kids are 10 months and three and they want my attention and they're on top of me they're jumping on me they're saying mom 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 all the time like i don't have a break when i'm at home so it's either i stay up really late and study at night before they sleep or wake up really early another thing that has been working really well for me because london and wyatt want to wake up at like five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning and i'm not i'm not down to wake up earlier than that and then at night sometimes they stay up until 10 and there's no way for me to get them to sleep more <laughs> like I just can't do it and so I try to study and do as much work stuff as I can at work and when I'm home I try to do as much home stuff and be with them as much as I can so that brings me to tip number two and that is to spend 
uh, event or do something together as a family, whether that be game night or dinners together or an activity. For us, we like to cook dinner and eat together as a family. And that means turning off all electronics, phones, tablets, TVs, whatsoever, and just sit down and then talk about your day. If you can't really communicate like Wyatt and can't tell us about her day, we still make him try. London's not talking yet, but we still try to be there together. We also try to let Wyatt participate in the cooking process because we're hoping that since he's such a picky eater, that if he helped us with preparing the meal, he will actually eat it. Um, that hasn't always been the case, but we still try and that's our activity together. Like we try to involve all the things together. Before the whole pandemic, we would go on like in a little adventure every week. So funny. which was really fun when I wasn't on inpatient and so Stan would try to find new hikes or um, museums or parks and things like that where the kids can hang out and discover new things and we just I don't know like that was just fun and exciting for us um, or finding a new restaurant so those are all the things that we like to do together as a family my third tip is specifically towards your relationship with your spouse and so for me um i'm married to someone who is not in medicine and so it's really hard to connect sometimes and for my partner to understand like what it is that this whole journey like takes a toll on you like the not only physically but mentally as well like hearing patient stories and being like fully present for your patients all the time it can be emotionally draining um and so to make up for all that like we decided that we need to spend quality time together and we needed to communicate in a way that's deeper than just like oh hey how was your day and like the day-to-day -day, you know very superficial stuff so at least three times a week we try to sit down after the kids go to bed and just talk about our emotions like what we're feeling and then we bring back like childhood events maybe trauma that has come up in our past and try to deal with those together um we haven't been able to go to counseling because of this whole pandemic thing and apparently it's very expensive but this is our form of counseling so we talk to each other um i tell him about things that bother me in my childhood or things that have happened to me growing up or in college and how i feel that it has personally affected me these sessions really help us become vulnerable with each other and bring us into a space that we have created that doesn't really get created on a day-to-day -day basis if we were just going through the motions and just doing things as routine I feel that it wouldn't bring up these deeper moments and so we have created that for ourselves at least several times a week and so we can connect and bond on a deeper level in that sense and so I feel like that has really brought us closer together as a couple and help us grow together and just be more solid, basically. So yeah, those are basically all my tips that I do on a regular basis to try to keep my glass a little bit half full rather than half empty during this whole residency process. Um, I'm always keeping in mind that the light is at the end of the tunnel and as an attending you can make your schedule you can do what you want to do um, and you can decide what kind of life to live and still be a doctor so that being said if you guys have any tips for me on how you manage to have a work-life balance leave it in the comment section below i love learning from you guys and getting to know you and just this community that we have come to create together um, if you haven't already, please subscribe and make videos at least once a week. Press that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. I would just like to tell... <laughs>
show. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think he's tired. We'll do this later.